Welcome to module 2.4, superspreading event in a presymptomatic population. Here we use genetic epidemiology to investigate COVID-19 superspreading event in a congregate care setting. This presentation is part of the COVID-19 ep genomic epidemiology toolkit uh, from CDC's Office of Advanced Molecular Detection. My name is Dr. Glenn Gallagher, and I'm the Division Director for Molecular Diagnostics and Virology at the Massachusetts State Public Health Lab. This is the fourth of the four case studies that we will review to provide insights into how whole genome sequencing can be used as an investigative tool in outbreak settings. Be sure to check out the toolkit's other modules, which include a combination of case studies and training materials to help get you started supplementing epidemiology with genome sequence data. In this module, we focus on a COVID-19 cluster in a skilled nursing facility, or SNF, in Boston, Massachusetts. This 142-bed SNF serves short-term care, long-term care, and memory units. Mean resident age was 83 years, and the minority, 28%, of residents were male. In the spring of 2020, the state selected this SNF to serve as a dedicated COVID-19 rehabilitation center requiring the relocation of all residents. Although the SNF had not reported any confirmed or suspected COVID-19 cases, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Public Health re recommended that the facility conduct universal screening testing of all residents and staff before the residents were relocated. This recommendation was based on emerging reports of asymptomatic SARS-CoV-2 spread in congregate care settings. In response, universal SARS-CoV-2 screening was conducted in April of 2020. The facility employed intensive infection prevention measures in response to COVID-19. This included a strict visitation policy, daily symptom and temperature checks for residents and staff, strict masking policy with the universal masking of staff and mandatory masking of residents who left their rooms, increased attention to hand hygiene and a heavily restricted facility admissions policy. Only three residents had been transferred into the facility in the two weeks preceding the universal screening testing. Unexpectedly, the universal screening testing revealed a super spreading event. The screening was conducted among reportedly asymptomatic residents and staff. In total, 194 persons were screened for SARS-CoV-2 by real-time PCR. 97 were residents and 97 were staff. Overall, 61% of all persons tested positive. Specifically, 85% of residents and 37% of staff tested positive. Nearly a third, or 31% of residents died two weeks after the testing. 80% of these residents had tested positive. Here we show a detailed timeline of specimen collection among residents and staff for real-time PCR testing. Specimens were collected on three days. April 1st, April 5th, and April 6th. On April, April 1st, nasopharyngeal or NP swabs were collected from 97 residents, of whom 52 or 52% 52 tested positive. Four days later, on April 5th, the 45 residents who had tested negative on April 1st were retested, and 31 or 69% tested positive. On April 6th, NP swabs were collected from 97 staff, of whom 36 or 37% tested positive. To capture the genomic characteristics of the super spreading event, whole genome sequencing, or WGS, was performed. Sequencing was conducted on specimens from 83 or 70% of the 118 total cases. Upon examination of the sequencing results, revealed rapid spread suggesting a super spreading event that agreed with the epidemiological data. The majority, 75 of 83 or 90 percent of sequenced cases, comprised a single cluster shown here at the right. right here. You can see that these genomes show very little genetic diversity with short branches. 59 genomes are identical. For a single introduction with a high number of cases, this is uncharacteristically low genetic diversity. 
If we now look at these cases with the x-axis as a, the date of specimen collection, we can see that the estimated date of the common ancestor for this cluster is March 20th. This data supports spread of SARS-CoV-2 among reportedly asymptomatic persons. Another observation we can make from this data is that not all introductions led to rapid transmission. Here on the right, you can see cases represented as circles using a software called Microbe Trace, clustering by genetic similarity. This cluster of cases here represents the tree that we showed on the previous slides. But now we can see that two other clusters exist with three cases each, right here and right here. Seeing these additional small clusters provides evidence that multiple introductions occurred in the SNF and that the superspreading can dramatically influence transmission dynamics with most cases resulting from one introduction. Additionally, all three putative introductions occurred despite this facility's implementation of intensive infection prevention measures. In summary, the observed genetic diversity in the MIN cluster was strikingly low, even for recent transmission with a single introduction. This event might reflect a low genetic diversity with a, within the index patient, a superspreading event where transmission to secondary cases occurred through events such as unusually close or prolonged contact of the index case to secondary cases, or the index case having a very high viral load at the time. It could also be a combination of these things. Notably, very little onward transmission was observed. This might be a result of the event occurring in a relatively isolated population. Key takeaways from this case study are, one, that intensive infection prevention measures are essential, but they may be insufficient for preventing all transmission. Two, screening testing of reportedly asymptomatic persons for SARS-CoV-2 can identify early transmission, and this can help public health officials prevent further spread. And three, genomic sequencing of this superspreading event revealed extremely low genetic diversity with one of three putative introductions resulting in rapid spread. A limitation to consider is that all residents and staff were reportedly asymptomatic and that some persons might have had unidentified symptoms. We acknowledge Jacob Lemieux and colleagues at the Broad Institute for their assistance with this case study. Thank you.